Good morning, YTPC. Philly Piper Mike here. It is uh, Wednesday, July 21st. 73 degrees. Going up to 86 today. We're out of my back seat. Today I'm smoking one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Costello, Canadian, Sea Rock, KK. Definitely one of my favorite. I love that stem. Just love this pipe, the size of it. Everything. Always on the hunt for more uh, Costello Canadians in that shape, that size. Not easy to come by, though. And in it today, in honor of all the hoopla yesterday with the Sun Bear Black Locust edition, I'm smoking some Sun Bear. Uh, I think it's the original release. 2019, I think. Oh, buddy, coming in hot. Um, it is a good blend. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice, sweet Virginia. Super honey forward. I wish I didn't enjoy it as much as I did because it is really good, but it's just, you got to pay that premium. <coughs> or like I talked about yesterday, you got to be one of those hoarders that stays up and at 12.01 midnight is ordering 15 tins, at least, if not ordering 15 tins from like different places. <laughs> but I smoke it sparingly. I have a few tins of this. Pretty good. I don't know what the difference with the locust, black locust will be or not, but I don't know if this one has Orientals. I know the black locust definitely has two different types. It's got Izmir and something else. So I don't know. I didn't. I didn't even read the description to see if there's. I don't, I don't taste any Orientals in this, but there might be. It, it, there is a look I can't tell if it's like oriental that's in this that's giving me that flavor as well as the honey or it's just honey orientals can give you like this um, almost like a like a boozy f flavor for a topping so there might be some orientals in this too but I, uh, I honestly did not usually I'll just read the the tin description before I do the review. But I was in a little bit of a rush this morning, so I had to get out of the house. The more I smoke it, I, I, I think there's definitely Orientals in here. But it's giving me that same type of, you get from like the Red Hunt, Orientals, when, when I was a, a novice pipe smoker, I always equated Orientals to like Latakia, and I thought that Orientals were giving me like the incense quality, incense type quality, which um, I found to not be true. The more, once my, yeah, the more and more my palate evolved, and I was able to actually. Um, distinguish between different types of tobacco and different tastes that they that they impart on a blend um, because in the beginning you know you're smoking a bite you, you know you don't know what you're tasting everything's new you're reading about these all these reviews and they're saying all this crazy stuff and you're like well I don't taste any of that 
And like I just taste tobacco. <laughs> um, you know, and it isn't always for myself. It wasn't until years later that you know now I can I can taste the difference between different types of Virginias, brown Virginias, red Virginias, lemon, yellow Virginias, um, different types of Burley, you know, Dark Fire Kentucky, <clears throat> White Burley, um, Orientals, different types of Orientals, Latakia, obviously. I never really delved too much into the, in the first couple of years I smoked a pipe, I was pretty big into English blends and the last two or three years, I just, I just don't, I just don't have the taste for Latakia anymore, not that I, like, don't like it, per se, like, oh, I can't smoke that, like, I'll smoke an English blend, but I don't, I didn't never have the desire to, um, I smoked a lot of Kia rolls every once in and again, there, that, that's, that's nice, it's got just the amount, just the right amount, um, but I just don't, me, it's like, why am I going to smoke that when I can smoke a vapor or a Virginia that tastes much better to me? Um, so, but yeah, it does take years for, personally, for my palate to be able to pull out those different blends, and now, you know, I'm pretty confident when I smoke a blend, even if it's new, you know, what I'm tasting and what's in there and, like, the levels of what's in there. It really makes you enjoy the hobby more. It's, it's it's the same thing with scotch and bourbon. You know, when you first start drinking bourbon or scotch, you're like, oh, all I taste is whiskey. Um, and then over years of of drinking different scotches and different blends and bourbons and different regions, you can kind of start to, oh, okay, I, I I do taste this. I taste that. It's the same thing. You know, when I first I would read reviews or watch videos of like the whiskey tribe or you know and I'm like wow they're tasting what I don't taste any of that I just taste like burning whiskey taste so same thing with coffee I mean anything good in this in this life that you know coffee whiskeys tobaccos um I'm not I haven't done it with cigars because I'm not really a cigar guy that was one of the things that I still like. Oh, I taste cigar, you know. I taste cigar tobacco. I don't, I don't know different wrappers or different, different tobacco blends there, binders and all that crap. But all the good stuff takes a uh, time to acquire a palate, and then it just makes it that much more enjoyable. You know, if you can, if you can fight through the beginning stages of not knowing and everything kind of tasting. You know, like, yeah, I don't like that taste. That's why I'm glad I have a couple buddies that, you know, are just predominantly aromatic smokers. Um, and I've, I've, you know, tried to get them, give them some blends to, that they might, in, you know, try to enjoy. And, and once you get over that, like, oh, you know, this does, this just tastes like cigarettes or tobacco or whatever. You know, there's a whole other world that it opens up as opposed to just aromatic smokers that just are really all you're tasting is whatever it's topped with or cased. So, I just think you enjoy the hobby a lot more, but to each their own. If you like aromatics and that's all you like, then that's all you like. So, I'm hoping... Um, I've been wanting to try the Watch City Simply Red and the Rhythm and Blues for about a year when I ordered all my other Watch City stuff. That stuff was had been sold out. I'm assuming it, it just gets released annually. So I'm really hoping that... Um, I can get my hands on some. <clears throat> it releases, I think, at 12 o'clock today, so I have, I have my alarm set. I'm gonna try to get like eight ounces of each, just to try it. And if I do like it, eight ounces will be plenty for for the foreseeable future. Um, I know when the when the Rogaru got released, um, 
it was gone in like 15 minutes. So I'm hoping, I think that might have been like a special, I don't know if it's like a special edition or a small batch. <clears throat> I know they have some small batch releases too. So I'm hoping they have a good amount of that stuff and that it doesn't sell out like that because I'd like to get some just to try it. Um, they both sounds good. One's a vapor, one's a red Virginia. So. Anywho. Sun Bear is good. Although it does fall into that category, like I said yesterday, that I try to stay away from, which is the highly sought after, not available, you know, blends that you can't get your hands on or you have to do work to get your hands on them. So. But it's nice as a treat. You know, that's the same thing with like the, the one tin I got of the Black Locust. That'll easily last me a year, if not longer. You know, if I smoke a bowl here or there. watching uh, some of Ben's videos. I, I find that, that I, and I'm so guilty of this, of, you know, there's so many people's videos in the YTPC that I just, I don't ever see because I'm so, I'm such a like, oh, here's your recommended videos. And it's like, oh, I'll watch that. And then it's like, oh, I'll watch something else. And then another one pops up and you go down that rabbit hole and you never really get to like, and I, I'm so bad at like, because I watch them on my TV, 90, 98% of the time, you can't comment and you you don't get notifications or like, um, like, oh, this person posted a video, this person posted a video. So it's YouTube on, on the, on the app, on a TV is kind of dumbed down. So, you know, I don't see who posts videos unless I go on my phone and ever since I started watching them on my TV out on my porch when I smoke a pipe. I don't really watch them on my phone that much. So, plus I'm subscribed to so many people that the notification icon's always up and there's always like a, hundreds of like, this person posted a video, this person recently uploaded a video. And you get, so like, if I, unless I search for a specific person and I was thinking, you know, I was talking to Ben through through text message and I was like I haven't watched seen any videos of his in a while so I ended up you know searching him out and I watched his his video from last week and then his some of his live stream recorded live stream with Nick Nick Piper um but yeah I really gotta get into to watch more videos see I, I get caught up in like like I've been doing a lot of stuff with like my my compound bow and target shooting so there's been a lot of stuff of that and then I watched this uh, really cool if you guys are into um, any kind of like historical stuff there's a awesome YouTube channel called the history traveler um, or history underground and um, he's uh, he's awesome he goes around he does a, like a big segment and he goes over to, to Normandy and does a lot of D-Day stuff he goes to like Camp Curahy where Easy Company they redid that and they, they cleaned up like a, the overlook out there and he, he, he just does a lot of cool stuff a lot of stuff in Gettysburg which is you know here in Pennsylvania a lot of Civil War stuff so he does it all he does Civil War stuff he goes to Arlington he goes to Normandy um, just really cool and they're not like super long videos like he'll do like 10, 12, 15 minute videos some of them are like a half hour but if you're, if you're into anything historical or you like, especially stuff with, um, you know, the military, and, um, then it's, uh, it's, it's really a great watch. Um, History Traveler, or the History Underground, um, highly recommended. So I've been watching a lot of his videos. I just found him a couple weeks ago and I, uh, I've been going down that and then that leads to other, <laughs> other like, you know, historical video, it's just a, you know how it is, YouTube rabbit hole, you get sucked down, and then, you, you know, it's been weeks since you've watched any videos on anybody on the, on the YTPC, so, 
I gotta I gotta change that. But anyway, guys, I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, oh, I also picked up which um, I was uh, the in the, what, in the uh, virtual pipe club this week. They had um, Nikolai from the, the owner of the Danish Pipe Shop, and it's funny. I had been, I had looked at this pipe probably six months ago. And I didn't pull the trigger. It's the the Danish Pipe Shop 50th anniversary. That uh, I think it's like the Dan Tobacco pipe. It's like a almost like it's like a real tall bowl with like a, an up upslope stem. Super cheap. I think it was like 85 dollars uh, U.S. Um, and uh, I saw Miguel had got one too. Um, <clears throat> and I when I was watching it, I wasn't able to attend it this weekend. I forgot it was an early start and I was on my way back from Lancaster so I was watching it on my phone in the car um, and he was talking about that and I was like I forgot about that pipe so I had gone and, uh, and I saw Miguel had bought a uh, like a smooth one and I was like oh yeah let me let me let me hop on now and get one while I will remember so I ordered one of them and then the Briar Blues 25th anniversary pipe that'll be uh, that'll be here Saturday so you'll see that Monday um, I just like, I, you know, I like anniversary pipes and stuff. I have the smoking pipes, 20th anniversary, um, the Peterson, I have, um, the Briar Blues one I ordered, I, that, the Danny's Pipe Shop, the 50th, I have another, or had another one from somewhere, I can't remember, I think it was another smoking pipes edition, um, but anyway. So yeah, guys, uh, I'm at work, and uh, Sun Bear, it's good stuff. If you can get your hands on it, try it, or, or don't, because then you'll want it, and then you won't be able to get it, and you'll have to pay expensive prices, so maybe don't do that. But Anyway, remember, guys, the left lane is for passing, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Be well.